Installing Citrix Presentation Server. Now for this section, we're actually going to complete the installation of Citrix. But before we do that, we've got to prepare Windows Server. We've actually got to get Windows Server installed on a system. And in order to get it installed, there's a couple of tricks that we have to do in order to make it function properly, and we'll talk about that. One of the things we have to do is, of course, install Terminal Services. One of the prerequisites for Citrix Presentation Server is that Terminal Services is installed and configured in application mode. We'll talk about how to configure it properly for Presentation Server and also how to license Terminal Services as well so that we don't end up installing Citrix and then 120 days later it ends up disconnecting all of our users because we don't have the proper licensing. There are a number of prerequisites installed before we can install Citrix. We have some, some .NET applications and some, some, uh, some Citrix prerequisites themselves that have to get installed, and we'll discuss what those are and how to get those properly installed in the system. And of course, Citrix licensing. In addition to terminal services licensing, we have to install some Citrix licensing as well. We'll discuss how to install Citrix licensing in this section, and then we'll how discuss how to add licenses to our server in the next section. And once that's all complete, we'll actually install Presentation Server itself. Okay, so we've spent some time now talking about the concepts surrounding Citrix Presentation Server. Let's actually spend some time getting it installed on a system. As you'll see in front of you here, you, we have a copy of Windows Server 2003. Now, in order to install Citrix Presentation Server, I need to have a copy of Windows Server, obviously. I can't go and install it on XP or, or, or NT4 Workstation Edition. It doesn't matter if I have 2000 or 2003 Standard Edition, Enterprise Edition, as long as I have a copy of Server. Let me log in. One of the very first things you should notice whenever I first log into this system, if I click on Start in All Programs, is that there's really nothing installed in the system. It's right out of the box. There are no applications installed. And there's a reason for this. When I create a Citrix server, I need to install Citrix Presentation Server as the very first application. And we'll talk in more detail later on about why this is the case. But Citrix itself will change your additional applications. It will modify their registry. It will modify how they behave once it's installed. And so any applications that are installed before Citrix gets on there may have some issues whenever you're trying to run them in a Citrix environment. So it is a recommendation when you are ready to install Citrix to have a system that is fully service packed, that is fully patched, but has no applications. The very first thing we'll do is install Citrix Presentation Server. For easy, ease of use, I've uh, copied the uh, Citrix installation files up here in the upper right of your screen. Let me click on them now. This is what you're going to see whenever you get the disk from Citrix. You'll notice the autorun.exe here, which will install the application. But I want to point you first to this documentation folder. Included with the CD is a pretty good amount of documentation that discusses how to install and use Presentation Server. In this docs subfolder, though, is one file that I want to point out before we ever started the installation. It's called this checklist.html. This is Citrix installation checklist for Metaframe Presentation Server version 4. And it discusses a lot of the things that I've talked about already. You don't have any applications installed first. You know, Windows update your system before you start. Let me scroll down and just discuss the uh, presentation server piece. For operating systems and disk space requirements, you need Windows 2000 server, 2000 server th uh, 2003 server, and at least 400 megabytes for s presentation server enterprise edition. This is very important right here. This is why I showed you this. Terminal services needs to be running in application mode. And I'm going to do this here in just a second. As you well know, there are two types of terminal services. There's the administration mode that you use whenever you want to log into your system as an admin and it allows two concurrent connections to a server. And then there's also this application mode. In a minute, I'm going to show you how we're going to install this, but this is a critical component to making sure Citrix Presentation Server installs correctly. You also have to have a version of the GRE, this 14206, and if you don't have it installed, it'll actually install it for you. The same thing with Windows Installer version 3.0 and the .NET 1.1. So be aware of these prerequisites before you install. So for our first step in the installation process, let's go ahead and configure terminal services into application mode. I'm going to close down this checklist and close down the file. To configure terminal services in Windows 2003, I click on the Start button. I click on Control Panel. I click on Add or Remove Programs. 
and then add and remove Windows components. A list of Windows components is going to appear, and I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom to Terminal Server. This is actually what configures Terminal Server for uh, um, use with the Citrix Presentation Server. If I've just installed this Windows Server directly out of the box, I'm going to get an error message like you see here that talks about the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. Now, this is that, uh, that extra secure Internet Explorer mode that is configured when you first install Windows Server. It's a great idea to have installed if you've got a regular server that doesn't have users on it, but if I'm using it as a terminal server, I probably want to uninstall the Enhanced Security Configuration to remove it. So, I'm going to click Yes here that I do want to install Terminal Server, and I want to scroll up to here, Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. I'm going to remove the checkbox here. The reason for this is because if I have users on my Terminal Server, they're probably going to want to use Internet Explorer, and the Enhanced Security Configuration tends to be too restrictive for normal users. Lastly, if this is my very first Terminal Server in my environment, I probably also want to configure a Terminal Server licensing server. I may not necessarily want to install it on my terminal server, but for our purposes, we'll do it here. We do need a terminal server licensing server to enable terminal services. I click Next. I get a little error message here warning me that I'm about to install this in application mode. I get an option for full security versus relaxed security. Some applications are so poorly written that they will not allow full terminal server security to operate. And that's going to be a testing process. If, you, if your applications do not function properly with full security, you may want to choose relaxed security. And this has to do with how the registry and system files locations under, under C, Windows, uh, C Windows and C Windows System 32 are configured, the NTFS permissions. For my purposes, I'm going to choose full security. On the next screen, I see terminal server setup. In order to have a terminal server that successfully functions, I need to have that terminal server licensing server, which is what I just clicked a few screens ago. In this case, I want to use these licensed servers. Since I'm installing it on this server, this server's name is CTX Nugget 1, I'm going to use this server as my licensed server. One of the biggest problems that people have when they install terminal services for the first time is that they don't install a terminal services licensing server. They don't install it. They don't activate it. And then once it's activated, they don't install terminal services licenses. If you don't do that, about 120 days later, you're going to see all of your terminal services, all your Citrix sessions, die, and you won't know why. That's probably because you haven't activated or installed terminal services licenses. In this case, let's make sure that this license server is set correctly. I can now choose to configure my licensing mode on a per device or a per user licensing mode. That's going to depend on the client access licenses you receive from Microsoft. In the per device licensing mode, each device requires a client access license. Or in a per user license mode, each user requires a client access license. I'm going to choose per user in this situation. I then get the option to choose a license server for my entire enterprise or from my domain or work group. This is going to depend on whether or not this license server is going to support the entire enterprise, the entire forest, or just this domain. In this case, I'm going to choose my entire enterprise. To complete the process, I put the Windows 2003 CD in the drive, allow Windows Terminal Services to complete. It will prompt me for a reboot, and I'll end up with the screen that you see here. Let's go ahead and log back in. The first thing you're going to notice after the logon is if I go to Start, All Programs, and Administrative Tools, I'll see three new entries inside of Administrative Tools for Terminal Server Licensing, Terminal Services Configuration, and Terminal Services Manager. I discussed a moment ago that the most important thing that we need to do after installing Terminal Services is ensure that the licensing server is activated and that you have appropriate licenses for it. You'll notice here that my server is not yet activated. If I right-click on that server, I can choose to activate the server. A dialog box prompts up, and I get the option to do an automatic activation method. I can use a web browser, or I can use a telephone. The automatic connection is useful because it handles all of the communication back and forth between you and Microsoft. 
If I click next, it allows me to enter in my name. And a company. And also a region. For the purposes of this, we'll make our region the United States. Additionally, I can optionally enter in additional information about my email, my organizational unit. This organizational unit has to do with an LDAP organizational unit, company address, etc. And the server is successfully activated. Once the activation is complete, then I can add licenses. In the same way that I uh, activated the server, I want to add license packs to that server. You'll see here licensing program retail purchase. If you're an enterprise agreement customer or a select agreement customer, you can put in your enterprise agreement number here, or you can put in your select license agreement here. Same thing with campus and school, etc. For retail purchases, I'm going to need to talk to a value added reseller and purchase an equal number of terminal server licenses as I'm going to have for my Citrix licenses. Most value added resellers will know this and will sell you them in a pack. You'll get a 25 digit string similar to your Windows activation code that you'll use to install licenses. If I click next, you'll see that it'll enter the license code here. Again, this is extremely important that you enter them in because after 120 days, this server will go non-functional. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to click cancel, but this is the location where you enter in those license codes. Okay, whew. so we've got terminal services installed. We've got a terminal server licensing server installed. We have that licensing server activated and we have licenses installed. Now we're ready to install Citrix. So I'm going to click up here on this folder that includes the Citrix installation files and then click on the auto run.exe file which starts the installation process. The second item down is called product installations and updates. That's the one I'm interested in. And then I want to install MetaFrame Presentation Server 4. The very first thing that's going to pop up is a license agreement. And I always think this is funny because if you click I accept the license agreement and click next, it says no, you must actually scroll to the bottom of the license agreement before you can continue. So, like a good systems admin, scroll to the bottom and click next. We talked before about the prerequisites that are involved with the installation. You'll be re re reminded of them here. Click next. And here I want to stop and focus for just a second. These are the different components that I can choose to install with Presentation Server. The very first one here is the Access Suite licensing. We talked about Terminal Services licensing before, but Citrix itself has licensing as well. If I don't install an Access Suite licensing server somewhere, then I won't be able to connect users to my Citrix server. So for this, the purposes of this demo, I'm going to install licensing onto this server. The Access Suite console is what we'll find out later is used for a lot of the configuration with Presentation Server. We're going to need that, so we'll install that as well. We need Presentation Server itself, and we need the Presentation Server console, which allows us to do further configuration of our Citrix server. We can also install Document Center, which is all the administrator guides for the MetaFrame Access Suite. Since this is my only Citrix server in the environment, I'm going to install them all. I'm going to get asked a lot of questions starting at this point. The very first thing it's going to do is install the J2, uh, uh, the J2RE 14206. That should complete relatively quickly. Once the J2RE is installed, it's going to pop through all of these these uh, prerequisites one by one. And then when the prerequisites are complete, I'm going to get prompted for some more information. The first of these is the Access Suite licensing. So I click Next, and I'm going to choose to install licensing to the destination folder, the default destination folder, which is C, Program File, Citrix. I then get the option for the features to install. You'll see here a license server and a license management console. The license server is what actually serves up licenses, while the management console allows me to configure that license server or view what licenses are being used. Make sure both of them are installed with the server. I'm going to specify the folder for storing my Citrix license files. In a little bit, I'm going to show you actually how to download your license files from the My Citrix website, but this is a location where you're going to put them. Since this is a Windows server and I don't have Apache installed, the web server I'm going to use for the license management console will be IIS, 
Make sure that you have IIS configured on your Windows box before you get to this point, or you will get an error. This screen asks you if it's okay to restart the IIS server to complete the install. Since I'm not, this is not a production server, it's okay to start that, restart the IIS server. You actually have to restart the IIS server to complete the installation. And you're ready to begin. We're going to install the files associated with licensing. And we'll move from there on to the next component. The next component is the Access Suite console. I click Next. Choose the same destination folder. And for the most part, you're going to install all the nodes inside of the, all the snap-ins inside of the Access Suite console. There's really not any reason not to install any of these nodes. I click the install. When the installation is complete, I click finish. Next is the Citrix web interface. We're going to click next. We're going to choose the default destination folder, which is Citrix web interface. And then we get an option to install the clients, which is the Citrix clients, from what's called the component CD-ROM. Now that CD-ROM comes with your CD book when you get a media pack from Citrix. But a lot of times, by the time you get the media pack from Citrix, the, uh, the clients that are on the CD are already a few versions old. So for our purposes, we're not going to install the, compliance, the clients from the component CD-ROM, and we'll actually install them in a later section. We click Next to begin the installation. And finally, we get to Presentation Server. This is really the meat of the, uh, the whole installation. And it's really where all the fun questions get asked. So let's click Next. When you initially purchased your license for, licenses from your value-added reseller, you were probably given three different options for those licenses. At the very bottom, we have the Standard Edition licenses, which installs just the MetaFrame Presentation Server components. This is really designed if you have a single Citrix server with not a lot of users on it. If you ever have more than one server, you're probably going to want to load balance your users across those multiple servers. And in that case, you'd purchase the Advanced Edition licenses. The Advanced Edition includes the Load Manager components that allows for that load balancing capability. We're going to talk about the Load Manager in a future section. If you have a very large installation of Citrix, you'll probably want to purchase Enterprise Edition licenses. The Enterprise Edition also includes Installation Manager, Resource Manager, Network Manager, and the WMI providers. What this allows me to do in very large installations is manage how my software packages or my applications are installed onto my Citrix server. It allows me to watch and manage how my system resources and my network resources are being used. And it also allows me some scripting capability using WMI to manage my Citrix servers. Very, very handy when I have a lot of Citrix servers. In this next screen, I get to choose the components of Presentation Server that I want to install. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to install all the components. But when you install your first Presentation Server, you're only going to want to install the components that you need. You'll see here I have a lot of different options. The Management Console, Installation Manager and Resource Manager if I'm installing Enterprise Edition, as well as Load Manager and Network Manager, and then the different options for Program Neighborhood and the Program Neighborhood Agent, as well as the WMI providers. As I said before, I'm going to install all the components because at some point I'm going to show you what these components do. If I do install the Program Neighborhood Agent, however, the Program Neighborhood Agent has to be aware of the web server that is hosting web interface. If I'm going to use Program Neighborhood Agent as a pass-through client, it needs to be aware of what the web interface is, the web interface server, that's pointing to this server. In this case, my web interface server is on the same server as my presentation server, which is CTX Nugget 1. So in that case, my web interface server is equal to this. I'm going to put that in here and click Next. On the next screen, I have to uh, select the desired pass-through authentication behavior. If I'm coming from web interface to presentation server, I have the option of authenticating at the web interface layer and authenticating again at the presentation server layer. A lot of times, if I've already authenticated at web interface, I can pass through that authentication to presentation server so my users don't have to log in multiple times. This is sort of a single sign-on capability. So in this case, I'm going to allow pass-through authentication. This means that my users only ever have to punch in their credentials one time. 
At the next screen, I get the option to create or join an existing server form. Because this is my first Citrix server, I'm going to create a new Citrix server form. I now get the option to create a new server form. The very first thing I need to do is give the farm a name. The next option I have is to choose how I want to connect to my data store where my configuration information is stored. I have the option of using a local database on this presentation server using either an Access database or an MSDE database. Or I can use a direct connection to a data store using a SQL server or an Oracle server or a DB2 server. If I only have a single Citrix server, it's probably a good idea just to use a local access database. It's easier. But as my number of Citrix servers increases and my performance needs increase, I'm probably going to want to shift to using a SQL Server database. Note that if I do connect to a SQL Server database or any sort of database, I'm going to need to create an ODBC connection to that database. Since I've only got a single server here, I'm just going to choose an access database for now. I can also choose a default or a zone name. For the purposes of this, I'm going to choose the default zone name, which is equal to the subnet that this server is currently installed into. I next give administrator credentials for the first administrator of this farm. In my case, the username is administrator and the domain is Nugget Lab. I choose licensing settings. Because I've already installed a licensing server on this server, my host name is CTX Nugget 01, or CTX Nugget 01, which is the, uh, the name of this server. And I get to choose a license server port. By default, the license server port is set to uh, TCP 27000, which is the default port. However, that can be changed if, if you want to change that port. For the purposes of this, we'll use the default port on this server. Presently, there are no licenses found on that license server. In a little bit, I'm going to show you how to install licenses for this product. But for now, let's just continue the product installation. In the next screen, I can configure shadowing. Shadowing is the ability for my users or my administrators to sort of look over the shoulder of users that are currently on that server. It's a very, very handy tool if a user is having a problem, if a user's um, uh, resources or, or application they're using is, is, is having an issue, and you want to see what's going on, or for training, or for collaboration purposes. If you choose to prohibit shadowing of user sessions on this server during the installation, you will not be able to enable that without reinstalling Citrix. So in a lot of cases, it's a, best, it's a best practice to just allow the shadowing of user sessions on the server and then to prohibit them in the administration console after the installation is complete. Otherwise, the only way you can ever bring them back is to completely reinstall the operating system, or completely reinstall Citrix. As we discussed previously, the Citrix XML service is how Citrix servers talk to each other. It's how they communicate load information. It's how they communicate their configuration to each other. It's how they talk to their data store. And it's also how they talk to web interface. By default, the Citrix XML service shares the TCP IP port with IIS. You can also choose a separate port if you want and select it down here. For our demonstration, let's just share the, the port with IIS. Starting with Windows Server 2003, there was a special group called Remote Desktop Users, which users had to be put into before they were allowed to RDP or to ICA to remote a uh, Windows Server. This screen allows us to either add authenticated users, add the list of users from the users group, or just skip this step. For our purposes, we're interested in adding authenticated users so that any user that authenticates to our domain has the ability to remote this system. I then get the option to review the selections that I've chosen and click Finish. Note that I get an error box here. Because I'm sharing the Citrix XML port with IIS, there are some security settings that conflict with that configuration, specifically to the virtual scripts directory. This asks, do I want to allow access to the virtual scripts directory for the Citrix XML service? If yes, I click Yes. When that completes, the installation begins. Once the installation is complete, I get this screen that asks me if I want to launch the ICA client distribution wizard. 
or view the readme file. In this case, I'm really not interested in either, so I'm going to deselect both and click close. I next get the option to install the presentation server console, the management console. Click next. and finish to complete the console. Lastly, I have Document Center, which is the administrative tools, the administrative documents. And those get installed to program file Citrix as well. Once I'm complete, I get an installation summary that discusses which products were either already installed or which products were successful. If any products show up as unsuccessful, then I should go back and verify that's why those products didn't inst install completely and I can click finish to be done. Once I'm complete with all the installations, I'm going to have to restart my computer to finish the installation. And congratulations, you have now completed your first Citrix server installation. As soon as the server reboots, we're going to bring it back up, and in the next section, we're going to talk about how to configure the farm settings. We're going to show you the different tools that you can use to configure the farm settings to get it ready for production. So what have you learned in this section? We talked about preparing our Windows Server for Citrix installation to make sure that we didn't have any applications installed before we installed Terminal Services or Citrix. We talked about the Terminal Services installation. We went through a Terminal Services installation. We also licensed Terminal Services so that uh, we didn't lose or disconnect our sessions after 120 days. We completed the Citrix prerequisites installations and also Citrix licensing and all in preparation for installing Citrix Presentation Server. And so now we leave this section with a completely installed server with Presentation Server ready for configuration. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.